All right. Hi guys, it's Wilma. Welcome to a new video. If you're new here, hi. I am an international student living in the US and I also do art. I do a lot of art vlogs and art videos. So if you like that, then this is the right place for you. This art vlog is jam-packed. I go to the art museum in this video. There's gonna be some sketchbooking. I draw a portrait. I build an easel and then I talk a little bit about school. There's a lot of stuff in this video. I just want to give a little bit of context to the art museum stuff. So I had to go to the art museum because I am taking an art history class in college and we're doing a research paper. So I had to go to the museum to like find what I want to write about. So that's why I went there. I went there with my partner, but we also just like love looking at art. We went to the art museum in Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Museum of Art. This was my second time going there and it's just like so beautiful. I love being there even though I've only been there twice, but we stayed for like six hours. It was pretty exhausting, but it was definitely worth it. And I saw so much good art that really inspired me. And I feel like I filmed literally the entire art museum for you guys. So. You're welcome. But yeah, there's a lot of art museum content. And then as I said, just like me drawing and sketchbooking and doing stuff like that. So I'm gonna not drag this intro out further and we're gonna jump straight into the art museum content. I hope you'll enjoy that and the video and let's get into it. Goodbye. <laughs> So as I mentioned in the intro, this is my second time ever going to this art museum and the first time that I went here was in 2021, two years ago, and that was my first time ever visiting America and it was also my first time going to art museum. And this art museum is huge and there's so much to see, there's so many art pieces and they're all insanely beautiful. So as I said, this is my second time going here. And there were a few art pieces that I saw the first time I went here two years ago that were kind of engraved into my head. Certain art pieces that I remembered more than others. But when I came back, I felt like there were so many art pieces that I didn't remember from the first time. Possibly because I was really overwhelmed by the amount of art the first time and how big it was and going from where I live to America, which was very different. I'm just absolutely mind blown by the art in this museum. If you've ever been to like a big art museum or just seen like this type of art in real life, seen this good of art, you would know that it's literally the most insane experience because a lot of the art pieces are really big and they're all so well made. You can like barely wrap your head around the fact that people can make art this good and it just fills you with so much inspiration you feel just really mind blown i guess by 
all of this art and it's just a really good experience. Although it was a really good experience, it was also really exhausting. We stayed at the art museum for quite a lot of hours. There is a lot of art. So it takes you quite some time to get through it all. Obviously you don't have to look at all of it, but I feel like once you're there, you're gonna wanna go through the whole museum. And that's what we did. And we had a really good time, but we were also so exhausted afterwards. I swear it took us like a week to recover. <laughs> but despite that, I still think that it's so worth it. The art is just incredible and it's such a good atmosphere to be in. I will say that I think the two-year gap that there was for us in between going to this museum, like the first time we went was two years ago, I feel like that's a really good time span in between because there is a lot of art and it takes a lot of time to get through it all and it's so exhausting that you kind of like don't really need to go back for a while, at least that's my opinion. But yeah, it was wonderful. I truly had such a good time and it's one of my favorite things to be surrounded by such beautiful art and to just spend so many hours looking at it, even though it did make my body ache. But that's the price you pay for looking at really good art.
Okay, so it's time to take a look at this portrait that I drew and talk a little bit about it. So I decided that I wanted to draw this portrait and I didn't want to do it in my sketchbook because I've been working so much in my sketchbook recently to the point where I was literally like, I need to do something that's not in the sketchbook because I feel like I'm going to get so used to drawing in only one size that I might forget how to do like bigger art because my sketchbook is not like the biggest thing so therefore I was like okay I need to not work in it right now for a little bit so I decided that I wanted to draw this portrait and once again I found this reference photo in the group Kano on telegram where there's a bunch of royalty free photos and I saw this portrait and I was immediately drawn to towards it there's some really interesting light in the face and I really enjoy all of the colors in the photo. So I instantly knew that it was a photo that I wanted to draw. And so I began my journey of drawing it. And as I said, this is bigger than usual because I just felt like I needed to draw something a little bit bigger. I was in the mood for it and I hadn't drawn a bigger portrait for a little bit. So I felt like I was due for a bigger portrait. Not that it's like really that big, but it's, you know, bigger than usual, bigger than my sketchbook. So. I wasn't really struggling with a lot in this portrait. I had a good sketch, so I had a really good starting point and that felt really nice because sometimes when I've started a drawing, I've known that the proportions haven't been the best, but I believe that I could fix them later and then it's just been like the biggest struggle. So the fact that I started out at a good point, having good proportions and having a good sketch really set me up for a good drawing experience. And as you can tell, I'm drawing this portrait in colored pencils, which is one of my favorite techniques when I do portraits. And I just loved the colors in this portrait and especially the light. I love the way that the light kind of like made some of the colors, like the one light streak in her face made the other colors around it a little bit more vibrant. I absolutely loved that. And so that was really, really fun to draw. And then I was really just enjoying doing all of the colors in the face. There were a lot of really nice tones that I enjoy working with. I think one of my favorite parts about the drawing was, besides for doing the light, was drawing the eyes, specifically the one eye that the light is coming through. I love the colors of that eye and just like the way that it looks. I just love that. And then I also really enjoyed drawing the lips. I think the lips have really good color and they also turned out really good and it was really fun to also draw this specific light because it's obviously like a very harsh light you can really tell where on her face it's hitting her like where it lays on her face so that was a really fun challenge and seeing it all come along was really cool because when i'm drawing i'm just like focused on one part at a time i'm not really seeing the full picture so once i was actually done i was like dang you can really like tell how the light is hitting her face and i thought that was really cool one of the parts that i didn't enjoy about this drawing was having to do all that damn hair oh my god so I'm not really the biggest fan of drawing hair because it's such a like a repetitive process. All you do is just fill in colors, do like a few strands that stand out, like highlight them. It's just really boring. And since I made this portrait a bit bigger than usual, there was so <laughs> much hair. I was like, oh God, when is this gonna end? But I decided to power through it. And I think I did all of the hair in one sitting, which I usually don't do because I just get so tired and bored that I'm like, I'll continue this another time. But I really wanted to finish it because I have a lot of other projects going on and I was just like, I just need this to be done. So yeah, the hair wasn't the most fun. But besides for that, I had a really fun time drawing this. I love how it turned out. It's, yeah, I'm just in love with it. So when it was time to do the background, I wasn't completely sure what to do. I was thinking about doing a solid color for a little bit, but then I was like, no, that's too boring. Like I can't do that. So then I was just thinking about it for a little bit because I didn't want to rush into anything. I didn't want to do something that I would end up not liking. So I tried to think a little bit about it. I thought about doing like a gold background, but then I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. Eventually I ended up asking my partner what he thought I should do for the background. And he suggested that I should 
do this light blue like plaid striped background which i did end up doing and it turned out so cute so thank you taylor great idea i think the background really like complements the portrait a lot i love the light blue in the background the way that it looks with the skin tones looks so nice i also love the fact that there's like stripes in the background and there's kind of like a stripe of light on her face i think that really pulls it together i think the background just like was really the cherry on top i'm super happy with the results of this one it was really fun except for the hair <laughs> really fun had a good experience and i'm very happy with it Alright, so I just finished this drawing. Um, I'm pretty happy with it, but I'm also like, what am I supposed to do with this? Like, where do I put this? Um, it's pretty big. I've been trying to work on a bigger scale just for some size comparison. This is a drawing I did two, three years ago. Um, so as you can tell, I'm definitely scaling up, which I'm really happy with. I do love this background. I think it turned out so cute. and. I think it's a really cute portrait. Um, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know if I want to hang it up. I feel like I'm probably just gonna put it away because I'm like, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with it. I think it turned out really cute. All right, hi guys. Today is September 19th and I just wanted to update on a few things that has happened recently. So first of all, I went back to school like three weeks ago and I'm currently taking four classes in college. I'm taking math, art history, English, and then I have a basic drawing class. So all of my classes were going pretty good. I felt good about them in the beginning, except for one class and that was my English class. So the professor that I had, and I'm gonna get to why I said had, <laughs> the professor that I had in my English class was making me very anxious. I just like didn't really agree with their teaching style. I didn't enjoy the classes. It was very anxiety inducing and I just felt really uncomfortable and I was just like not good and I was feeling pretty miserable after every single class and like in class and I wasn't really gonna do anything about it because I didn't know if I could do anything about it so I was like I'm just gonna get through this semester and try to survive it <laughs> um but then I came to the conclusion and I also realized that it was possible for me to change my professor so that's what I ended up doing so beforehand I had uh, my English class every Tuesday and Thursday like I had two classes previously in the day and then that would be my last class and I would get out at 1 45 p.m. Now I only have that English class once a week with a new professor obviously but it's an evening class so it's from 5 30 until 8 p.m. So on Thursdays I go to school twice. I go in the morning and then I have two classes and then I get out, go home and then I go back in the evenings. But it's definitely worth it even though it's a bit inconvenient. Um, I was just like so uncomfortable in the other English class and it was making me miserable. So I'm very happy that I could change that and I've had my new English professor one class so far and I love her. She's like just so great, like the complete opposite from my other English professor. So I'm very happy that I actually like made a change. I guess moral of the story is if there's something you're uncomfortable with, you should to the best of your abilities like try to change it, see if there's anything that you can do about it. But yeah. I was very happy to get out of that class and get into a new one with a new professor. So that's one of the things that's happened recently. I also wanted to show you guys, I don't know if I've put this drawing in yet or if it's gonna be after this because um, I don't always do chronological order in my videos but I'm keeping a sketchbook for my basic drawing class so we're doing still life drawings each week in them and you have to do like three to five different still lives each week the number of it depends on how fast you work and I am pretty slow so I'm doing three each week um, so this is one that I did last week and then I did this shell which is super boring, um, but I was really tired on this day. So I was like, I'm just gonna do something really simple. 
This is from the same day as the show. The first drawing was from a different day where I had more energy. But yeah, I did a scissor as well. Very boring, but it got the job done. But I'm very excited about that sketchbook because the whole sketchbook is going to be just still life drawings. And I'm so excited about that because I, I don't really do still lives often or like enough. And it's definitely something that I want to do more. So I'm very happy that I have this class to push me to do that. I'm so tired right now. It's been like very hectic lately and I've had like no time to rest. And I just finished my homework for the day. So I think I might just like relax, maybe take a nap and then just like do some work for me. Like make some art, maybe edit this video. <sighs> just like do more fun stuff that's not homework. But yeah, those were my updates. So as I was mentioning earlier, I am keeping this sketchbook for my basic drawing class and we're doing still life drawing in it each week. So for the first week, all we had to do was draw still life. And then as the weeks have gone on, it's been a little bit more specific. Um, but for now, I just did a object. I could choose any object I wanted and I just had to make a drawing out of it. So I chose this um, like water spritzer. I don't really know what it's called. It's like you spray water on your plants with it. I thought it would be a really fun object to draw because there's a lot of like interesting light and shadows and values, I guess. It was definitely not the easiest thing I've done and I did mess up the proportions a little bit, but something that's really great with keeping this sketchbook for school is that it's not really about like at least I don't feel like it's that much about if it's good or bad. It's mostly just like for practice reasons. So I'm really happy that I have this place to literally only practice because I feel like I don't do that enough. I usually do like a lot of completed drawings and not just like sketch like this. And I also love the fact that we're doing still life drawings. I really enjoy still life and it's something that I don't do enough and definitely want to do more so i'm just really happy that i have this sketchbook to push me to do that but yeah sorry about the light the light isn't great here it was pretty late so i couldn't like get a good light set up but it was really fun to draw this and i was gonna limit myself as you saw to just 30 minutes it ended up taking me an hour but i guess i just didn't realize how much work it was gonna be but yeah i'm pretty happy with it i enjoyed it and yeah happy with the results So this is week two of me doing my sketchbook assignments for school. So for this one, you were only allowed to do outlines and I didn't really have any good pens for this. So it didn't turn out the best because of that, I think, but also because I guess I'm not used to doing only outlines. It's not a style that I really do a lot, but I really enjoyed the fact that it was something different. I did end up like filling in some parts, as you can see here. 
and I'm not sure I was allowed to do that but I literally couldn't help myself I was like I know this is only supposed to be an outline but it's gonna look so much better if I just fill in a few darker parts okay so I did that I hope my teacher won't mind but honestly like if, even if that like knocks off a few points of this I don't really care because I just feel like it looks better when I filled it in a little bit more so then the next thing that I decided to do was to draw this mushroom soup mug that I have I do not love how this turned out I don't like it at all actually it was just so difficult to draw because of my pens because they're so bad so it didn't turn out good i didn't really have that much fun drawing it either because i just didn't like how it was turning out so yeah i don't like this one at all but that's also okay because it's literally not even about if it's good or not it's just to practice so it's fine Hi guys, good morning. It is currently September 22nd. It's 9.08 a.m. Got myself some coffee. I woke up about a little over an hour ago. Today is Friday. I don't have school today, <clears throat> but I do have a lot of stuff to do. So I have a lot of schoolwork right now. Um, I have homework in every single class I'm taking. I'm taking four different classes. But besides for that, I also have like a lot of personal work i guess basically i'm going to be doing magtober this year i did it last year too if you don't know what magtober is it's a spin-off off of inktober but it's made by max monroe and it's just like a prompt list there's a bunch of words and each day in october you look at the prompt list and you see a word a word and then you make art out of that word and you do it every single day for october now i am not going to be doing it every single day for october i'm probably gonna try my best but i know that i'm not gonna do that because i'm in school i'm a full-time student i just like it wouldn't really work i could do it but that would be me risking my happiness and my health which are kind of important to me so i don't really feel like i want to do that <laughs> um but yeah, so I'm planning on doing Magtober. That's coming up in like a week and two days. But I'm currently working on the first prompt. This is something I did last year too. I did a few artworks ahead of time because it's just like so busy to do art every single day in October. And it's really nice to get sort of a head start to just like guarantee that you will post something for the first day or the first few days. Um, and I feel like me in the past would think that that's cheating, but I don't think so anymore because um, well, I never really thought it, but I feel like if I did think about it doing that in the past I would have thought it was cheating, but yeah, I don't think it is because doing art for a 31 day straight is just like crazy I have done it before I did it in 2020 and I know that it was really crazy and that was at a time where I wasn't very busy and now I am very busy so I'm like I'm just gonna do a few ahead of time to try to set myself up for a bit more of like a healthy not too busy october but it's probably gonna be very busy anyway besides for all the magtober stuff i also as i said i have homework in every class i'm taking so i have to do that nothing is like that much work so i'm not too stressed about that but I do have in my basic drawing class, I have to do a big still life drawing and that one is due in like a week and three days, something like that. I have to draw a big still life on a 18 times 24 inch paper, which I think is like an A2 paper. Let me see. All right, so it's like, it's a little bit bigger than an A2 paper, which is the European sizes i think so it's very big and i have to make that within a week basically she did give the assignment to us two weeks in advance but i didn't have an easel and i definitely need an easel for this project because the paper is huge there's no other way for me to do it like i can't hold it in my lap i can't put it on my table easel because that's just like way too small for the size of the paper so i had to buy an easel and I've been without an easel for nine months because I moved to America at the end of 2022 from Sweden and obviously I didn't bring my easel because it's very big. It wouldn't really like fit. I get, I mean, maybe it could have fit, but it's just like too big to bring. Um, so I haven't bought an easel until now and I've definitely wanted one before, but it was never like something that I 
really needed like I could just like not make big art and I could just like stay away from not doing any big art and I would be fine but at this point I actually needed it for this project so I had to bite the bullet and buy an easel and it's not like I didn't want the easel it's just like I didn't really feel like spending all that money right now but it's okay so I'm gonna put that together later today my main priority right now is to finish two art pieces one of them is the first prompt for Magtober and then the second one is just like a portrait that I'm doing right now so I'm gonna go and start my day um, the next clip you're seeing is probably going to be me building the easel which I do not look forward to because instructions for easels are usually not the easiest to follow anyway time to go work and I'll probably see you guys in a couple of hours see ya